surprise, surprise, if you are an ENFP and you've spent some time thinking about life, what you should do, what is your path, you are not alone. And within this realm of what to do with your life, working for yourself, working online, having an online business, or becoming an entrepreneur is becoming more and more common, mostly because jobs suck, but for other reasons as well. Now, I thought I would make this video because I am an ENFP, I am a coach and I work a lot with ENFPs as well as I have worked for myself for almost a decade now and so have seen the pros and cons of working for yourself as an ENFP and I thought I would make this video for you. We're going to start off with the pros and then get to the cons towards the end because that's what happens in the second part of the video. All right, so the first pro here is that when you work for yourself, you make your own rules, right? There is no bureaucracy, there is no red tape, or at least minimal compared to uh, what there would be within a large company. Generally, ENFPs, we do not like to be told what to do. We like autonomy. Now, what does differentiate us from some people is we don't crave power. This is very different. There's some people who want power, they wanna be in charge, we don't want the power, we just don't want to be told what to do. So I find it very interesting where I don't want a boss, but I don't like being a boss as well. Like with employees, I almost treat them too much like friends because I don't like holding power over people as well. Either way, if you like your autonomy, um, working for yourself is obviously the best way to get it. Now generally ENFPs are reasonably smart people with an interesting work ethic, which often involves lots of uh, hard sprints, project-based work, and achieving some great results. So when you work for yourself, one of the benefits is you get rewarded for the results. So rather than just being paid to show up regardless of what happens, you actually earn more based on your success. So if you do something great, you get the results. One of the downsides to this though, and I'll elaborate a bit more in the con section, is no one's necessarily there to tell you about it. So since you're working for yourself, you're not necessarily getting a pat on the shoulder, which we can all need from time to time. Another upside to working for yourself is that there are tons of challenges and variety. And you might think, wait, I don't want challenges, but you do. One of the reasons ENFPs tend to change direction and be all over the map, frustratingly so for many relatives, is a need for challenge and variety. And so working for yourself, you have that opportunity to keep uh, basically trying new things, changing, getting challenged. Now you wanna keep this under control. This gets into some business advice we won't fully cover here, but actually I'll link to a video Dong! that will cover it more, or it might be there. One, one of the sides, I'll link to another video where I talk about this specifically for ENFPs where you don't want your need for challenge to take over your business because it will mess it up. But the constant challenge that business tends to lend itself to will definitely be nice and leave you feeling a lot more satisfied than a routine repetitive job. Along these same lines, when you work for yourself, you get to design your work and you can play to your creativity, to your strengths a lot more. Now, this isn't always right off the bat, right? Sometimes you have to do the work you don't like. Sometimes you have to, yeah, just work harder or do the roles you don't wanna do. But over time, you get to design your business around yourself. You can hire people to do the work you don't like and, um, and just focus on what you do well. And if you do succeed with your business, and sometimes even when you just start out, if you get some fancy business card printed, there is a nice bonus that comes along of getting to feel kind of special, right? If you have your own business and you've been successful, there's a nice feeling of accomplishment and recognition there, which is something that um, everyone likes on some level, but I think as ENFPs especially, we like that little extra bit of attention from time to time, and this is a great way to get it. But it is not all rosy working for yourself, and anyone who tells you it is is probably lying to you to sell you a course about how to work for yourself. I say that as someone who sells a course on how to work for yourself. Really though, there is ups and downs to it, and it is not for everyone. Some of the cons for working for yourself as an ENFP include a lack of structure. So believe it or not, those of us who love freedom, if you get too much of it, it can be a dangerous thing. And sometimes the lack of structure can lead ENFPs to just flail in the wind, like not have a clue what to do and kind of lose themselves, change direction too much. Um, it's been said that giving yourself a structure allows you to actually have more freedom and creativity. And so a lot of artists talk about this with, like following a set bit of rules for writing, for instance, poetry. If you're doing a haiku, I think it's 757 or 575, one of those two, you're fixed in how many syllables you can do each line, right? And that 
fixed structure actually allows you to be more creative because you, your brain doesn't have unlimited possibilities where you go a bit nuts. Uh, now, you can try to create this for yourself within your business. I do this all the time, like artificially create structure, but it's something that you definitely can struggle with early on is that lack of structure. Often, although not always, there is less interaction with other people and less teamwork. So if you are freelancing and working on your own, you might not interact with people that much. And sometimes that's great. It gives you more freedom. It gives you more time alone, but sometimes it can be a bit lonely. And so it's definitely a downside to working for yourself. And I'm sure there is more than one ENFP who's ended up building a bigger company than they needed just to be working with people. I know I've made this mistake in the past of actually hiring people I didn't really need, but I wanted to have more of a team around me than just being working on my own. So for a brief period between my old company failing and starting what I do now, which was like 2011-ish, um, I took a role for a startup my friend had. And in that short period, I was amazed at how good it felt to get praise. Like I would do some work and then they'd say, oh, this is really great, Dan. Oh, this is awesome, that kind of thing. And uh, it was amazing. I was like, this is what it feels like to be praised because when you are the boss, you do not necessarily get praise, right? You're, maybe your mom will tell you you're awesome. Thanks, mom. But aside from that, your employees aren't usually telling you you're great. Um, and yeah, it can get rough in that way. So you really have to develop your own confidence from within. And that's something I'm gonna talk about a bit later in the video too. You have to develop that from within because you're not getting that praise. Another thing, when you work for yourself, you potentially open yourself up to more criticism. Um, I don't know about for you, but for me, criticism is an area I'm not a huge fan of and um, have had to learn to accept more and more. And so, when you, let's say you work for a boss, they've probably done some training in how to give people constructive feedback and be very soft and nice. Where if you're working with the open market and you're like doing sales or doing work for clients, there is a risk of just getting door slammed in your face or someone telling you your work sucks or something like that. Usually well worth it and that's all part of the game, but something just to be aware of. Now the final one here is a pro and a con, but really one of the best things about working for yourself is that you need to face your weaknesses. Now, that does not mean you should work in your weaknesses. This is very different. I believe you should work in your strengths, like focus on what you do best in your business. But you need to become very aware of what, you, what your weaknesses are and either uh, count for them somehow in terms of getting help or dealing with them. And this means that working for yourself, becoming an entrepreneur as an ENFP is one of the fastest ways to grow and develop yourself. I, I've done some different reading about the ENFP personality type in terms of stages of life and just different ways we grow up. I might make a video on it at some point, but when I was looking at that, I was maybe 29 and from everything I could read, I sort of fell in the 40 year old category in terms of some things I developed and some changes that had already happened with me. Um, and I lend that fully to working for yourself because every day is new. You have so many more challenges and you have to take responsibility. So you can't blame someone else or uh, blame the economy or whatever. I mean, you can, but you're not gonna develop as much. So you end up, I, I think, accelerating in life in terms of some of that emotional development and personal development a lot more. At least that's been my experience. If it's been your experience in another way, let me know below in the comments. If you are an ENFP and you work for yourself, uh, what did I nail here? What did I miss? I mean, my own experience working for myself is in my own kinds of businesses. So it could be very different for you depending on the kind of business you have. So if you are an ENFP working for yourself or thinking about it, let me know what you think about this in the comments below, what your own experience has been. Uh, if you've enjoyed this and you want more, I'm gonna link to a playlist of videos all about ENFP here, as well as subscribe to the channel. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and sometimes specialty videos like this on the weekend. Catch you in another one. Yeah.